Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here. Um, a little bit later in the day, after a very busy day here at the World Economic Forum on Latin America in Sao Paulo, um, I uh, remind you that the topic, the theme of, of this year's meeting is Latin America at a turning point, shaping the new narrative. And in this context, we're going to talk about a topic which is uh, a very um, important topic, um, in not only in, in Brazil, in Latin America, but all over the world, and it's a topic where the World Economic Forum is active for quite a while, um, which is um, corruption. Um, this press conference is talking specifically about building trust and transparency through technology. How te can technology help to overcome such problems? We have a distinguished panel with us today um, who will talk about the topic and explain a little bit what the World Economic Forum is trying to do in that space. We have Olivier Schwab, who is Managing Director and Head of Business Engagement of the World Economic Forum. Then next to him, we have Luis Alberto Moreno, who is the President of the Inter-American Development Bank. We have also with us, us um, Delia Ferreira Rubio, who is the Chair of Transparency International. And last but not least, we have Jennifer Smith, Head of Government Affairs, Latin America at City. Um, so I would like to ask uh, first Olivier, as the one representing the World Economic Forum, to let us know a little bit what uh, the forum is doing in general and what this um, specific initiative is about. And then I will hand over to the other panelists and at the end we have a little bit of time for some questions. Olivier. Sure. Thank you, Jan. So um, maybe just uh, provide a little bit of background. So Pachi, uh, the Partnership Against Corruption Initiative, is uh, uh, an activity that the forum's been driving now for 14 years. And it's the biggest CEO-led initiative of, of this kind, right? Basically, CEOs uh, of our partner companies coming together and saying, okay, you know, how, how can we address uh, some of these issues around corruption? And what we've, what we've realized over the years is that, um, you know, we need, we need a different approach to, to tackle some of these issues, and technology can help us. Um, a couple of years ago, we, we received the mandate uh, from, from our CEO community uh, to launch the Future of Trust and Integrity project, um, which is basically a platform to tackle uh, corruption around, uh, along three uh, dimensions. Uh, the first one is, is behavioral. So it's uh, creating a, a space for dialogue, uh, for sharing best practices, for sharing information between the private and public sector. Um, the second one is uh, sort of an institutional dimension where it's around the, the, the uh, where we work with the, uh, again, with the public and private sector around, you know, how do we uh, disseminate uh, policies uh, that, can, that can help uh, address the, the issue. And then the third one, indeed, is technological, right? So what kind of technologies are out there? Uh, that can actually actually help us. And so with this in mind, we're, we're very excited to launch uh, the Tech for Integrity platform, which is our uh, web presence and developed uh, together with, with our partners, um, uh, where we're basically taking some of these elements uh, online um, in, in a number of different ways. The first one is uh, the, um, uh, the platform has an open uh, space we call the Synergy Lab. And that's where companies and governments can go and when they have specific concerns, specific issues around transparency, uh, around you know, uh, open bidding processes, uh, they can find solution providers, uh, be it uh, technology providers, um, you know, think tanks or others. And, and uh, I think uh, um, um, you, will, you will talk about that in, 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 in a moment. Um, there's also a knowledge uh, accelerator, we call it, which is basically a repository of best practices on this platform where our partners um, can, can exchange uh, information. So it ties to, uh, it's, it's basically the digital uh, manifestation of the, of the Future of Trust and Integrity project, right? And the third component ties to uh, what I said before around working with uh, international organization, uh, working with uh, the, the public sector, 
uh, to look at uh, what kind of policies uh, can be can be uh, disseminated, right? So the outcome that we expect is um, you know building cooperation and changing mindsets, and we do that through a series of workshops, uh, catalyzing technology solutions. So this is a sort of a, a first step uh, in that. It's it's a new solution that we're putting uh, out there and making available, sharing data. Um, and then continuing to work through uh, our uh, dialogue series with, with the public and private sector to address the issue going forward. Thank you very much, Olivier. Mr. Moreno. Well, thank you very much, uh, and it's a pleasure here to be with, uh, with Olivier and, of course, with uh, Delia Jennifer. Uh, let me say at the outset that in today's Latin America, and speaking of this new narrative that Olivier was describing, there is no more important issue than the regaining of confidence and hand to hand with that is the belief in institutions and what that means in terms of transparency and anti-corruption. And of course, in this country, we've seen the whole question of La Bajato. But the reality is, anywhere you go around Latin America, 62% of the population of Latin America believes uh, that the situation of, uh, of corruption has worsened. And as Olivier was mentioning, you know, we've been uh, part of uh, uh, being together in the efforts of Pachi, but we're very much uh, uh, excited to be part of this platform. Uh, uh, because I, I think it builds on, you know, a lot of the things that uh, actually the private sector, and here the, the, there is a critical piece of what you need uh, in, in terms of the private sector. We have, as you all know, a number of elections happening uh, really this year and last year, uh, large turnovers uh, of uh, governments in Latin America. This is equally a big issue in the upcoming Summit of the Americas. It will also be an issue uh, in the G20. So this is a conversation that every day is gaining uh, traction. And on the other hand, uh, the bigger question is, what do we do? And how do we connect uh, to this integrity platform? So just let me uh, give a couple of examples of the kinds of things that we believe uh, can fit into this and the way that I, we think at the IDB that we can uh, help uh, cooperate. Clearly, there's different types, and Delia, I've learned a lot from her. She uh, is part of a, of a group that has been advising us at the IDB, and she has a number of very concrete steps that need to be taken. But one needs to separate the types of corruption. And clearly, there is a nexus, as we have seen, between corruption of high scale, uh, let's call it construction or government procurement type projects, and political finance of campaigns. And this, this nexus uh, is one that needs to be broken. And as we have seen in just about every country, uh, you always find the two together. And so there is the type of, of let's call it big type corruption, where there is uh, burdens not only on government and government officials, but equally on the private sector. And then there are things that governments can do to break other types of corruption, which are, let's call it, the smaller types of corruption, if you want, which are things related to red tape that needs to be cut and, you know, governments being more efficient. A lot of the, what the forum has been doing uh, around the fourth uh, industrial revolution. I mean, clearly, this is the one area that Latin America needs to get on. And, you know, the more that you digitize governments, the more that you have uh, open uh, data systems, uses of big data, integration across different parts of the government where you can uh, begin to integrate uh, better, uh, these are all ways through which uh, you begin to, to reduce uh, corruption that can happen through uh, red tape. You know, for instance, in Uruguay, we have been helping the government of Uruguay, which is close to putting 100% of their transactions online. Or in Panama, which is embarking on a program to have 450 services of the government online. Or in Argentina, we are moving to, uh, which is moving in a very fast way to have a paperless uh, government. These kinds of things go a very long way. For instance, electronic invoicing, the signatures. You know, we know we love we, Latin America. We love stamps and signatures. Uh, they can be today digital, uh, so that's a big part of it. 
how do we leverage big data? Something that Olivier was, was mentioning. Uh, you know, what, we know that, if anything, the, the fourth industrial revolution is producing massive amounts of data. So how do we make that data more uh, transparent and accountable? Uh, for instance, in Brazil, uh, there is the Public Expenditure Observatory, which uses data analytics uh, to be able to establish fraud in procurement. In 2015 alone, they were able to scrutinize close to 120,000 contracts, and they found cases of about 7,000, which were they were then able to begin to prosecute. I'm giving these examples because these are exactly the things that I think a platform like this one uh, can do. Uh, we have several open data projects. Uh, we're working in an anti-corruption package in this sense in Mexico, uh, local initiatives with local governments in Argentina, and training officials on big data analytics in the case of Costa Rica, just to give you an example. Uh, the other area is visualization platforms. For instance, in Colombia, we worked with a georeferencing system that we call Mapa Regalias, and any citizen in the most remote area of Colombia can see how royalties that are related to mineral uh, production or uh, oil production are tracked, and you can see how those monies are being invested. Again, we need an empowered citizen because it is not about the governments only, it is not about uh, the, the, the business community, but equally a more empowered citizen that can begin to demand, and that is demanding transparency. And finally, there's a lot of uh, uses to blockchain, especially on government procurement contracts. And here, there's a lot of developments that have been happening. There's a lot of startups and ideas uh, that are going there. And finally, uh, on customs, which is another big area of corruption, we have been working with the MIT Media Lab to use blockchain to not only identify, but to also track cargo shipments. These are just some of the ideas we want to work uh, in this process, be very close to this uh, integrity platform launch, show some of the good experiences that we have developed at the IDB. And sorry for taking a little bit too, too much time, but I have to tell my boss here, Delia, who's <laughs> pushing us in this kind of direction, the kinds of things that we have been doing. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, and uh, I will invite you to go to the platform. Really, it's a very useful thing. Congratulations to the team of the World Economic Forum. And I think technology, of course, offers great opportunities in the fight against corruption. For instance, in access to information, e-procurement, as you have mentioned, or customs, um, the possibility to share information among those agencies that are investigating corruption in many countries. That sharing of information is key, is crucial, not only at the local and national level, but in the international level and exchanging of information. Also, uh, this kind of technologies offers the possibility to um, better design public policies based on data analysis big data analysis and uh, really evidence in order to design the, poli the adequate policies. And it offers the possibility to track some kind of uh, patterns of corruption and fraud in order to, um, to flag situations that need investigation or some kind of mm -hmm. uh, research on the part of politics, uh, political uh, servants or public servants. Nevertheless, I think that when talking about technology, we have to be careful because as, as a tool, and technology is a tool, it has been adapted and adopted according to the objective we are trying to find. Sometimes in this new discourse of technology in terms of fighting corruption, uh, there is the idea that uh, some technologies, in particular, like, like blockchain, will solve all the problems that has to do with corruption. And that's not true, really. There are some tools that are very useful, and there are some others that are not useful in terms of fighting corruption. For instance, blockchain is wonderful if you are going to um, to use them for land registers, for instance. Mm -hmm. And you 
if we had had blockchain, we could have avoided huge uh, frauds, particularly in Argentina, in the, in the province of Cordoba. People were really um, stolen the property because we have a, a, a corrupt register, land register. So in that sense, blockchain is wonderful. But do you think blockchain can help in stopping nepotism, clientelism, money laundering? Probably not. And probably some of these technologies will create and have already created some space for opacity, secrecy, which is necessary for corrupt deals to, to be successful, let's say. So we have to, to take into account the possibilities, but also the risks. And particularly, we were talking with Ian uh, in the previous moment, um, we have to be aware of artificial intelligence and algorithms because we are going to face something that I call algocracy, which is the government run by algorithms. Many of our decisions, what we read, what credit do we access, or uh, what kind of jobs do we access, are the, um, decided through very neutral and not bias algorithms. We should start asking information about who designed the algorithms, who deployed the algorithms, who used the algorithms, because artificial intelligence is supposed to replace the so wrong way of deciding that human has, because we human beings are biased. But my question is, who designed algorithms? Humans. So at the very bottom of this problem, it's human beings and its values and its ethics, as Professor Schwartz mentioned in his book. Values are at the basic discussion here. So we have to take care in, uh, about that. And if you look at uh, what the Harvard University has decided for this term in order to incorporate ethic issues in the formation, in the studies of technicians, you are facing the real problem we have to, to deal with this kind of very useful tools which technologies offers us in terms of fighting corruption. I would leave it. There. Thank you very much, Elia. Uh, Jennifer, you, I know that City was very active in, in contributing to this platform, so can you give us yeah. the perspective from the private sector? Absolutely, and, and thank you so much. It's a pleasure and honor to be here and sitting amongst allies in our collective efforts to, to promote transparency and integrity. Um, I thought I would spend a few minutes talking about where we have come from and um, where we are now and where we see it going and the role the private sector can play. Um, for over 200 years, City's guiding strategy has been to finance progress. And we recognize that the harsh reality is that corruption inhibits progress for all, um, costing, I think, 5% of GDP, $4 trillion. And as a global bank, as we talked to global and political leaders, we saw this search for a new paradigm intensifying among leaders. And we were brainstorming how to help advance the Sustainable Development Goals, and in particular, 16.5. And we also saw that there were some technological breakthroughs and building blocks um, that could be used to, to promote transparency and to create solutions that many of our innovative clients would embrace. And while I agree it's, it's not the only solution, it is certainly a powerful one. Mm -hmm. um, and at City, we had already built a platform um, leveraging our technology and our capabilities, we had run five open innovation challenges. Um, and we had created an ecosystem of over 7,000 tech innovators and incubators around the world. And so when we combined our desire to advance the SDGs with our core, core capabilities within City, City Venture, City FinTech, and our innovation labs, Tech for Integrity was born. And so we embarked on and launched a global public-private partnership 
um, and an open innovation challenge to identify or crowdsource these solutions that could help advance transparency globally. Um, we were joined by our strategic allies uh, with MasterCard, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, Clifford Chance, Let's Talk Payments, and PwC to launch T4I. And we were joined by over 80 other governments, NGOs, and multilaterals like the Inter-American Development Bank who were instrumental in the success of the challenge. The initiative sparked the interest of over 1,000 indiv individuals, um, startups, and established tech companies who submitted solutions to over 70 pain points that we sourced globally in many of the areas that President Moreno mentioned, from red tape to efficiencies to government procurement and payments. And these, payment, these, these, these pain points were published um, to this innovative community and, and solutions were developed. From the 1,000, we selected over 213 innovators um, to go through a robust six-week virtual accelerator platform where we provided um, the participants access to mentoring, subject matter experts across a variety of disciplines, uh, webinars, boot camp sessions, and access to developer tools and APIs that they wouldn't normally have access to. And through that, we ultimately selected 96 finalists who presented their solutions at six demo days around the world, um, including two cities in Latin America, um, Buenos Aires and Mexico City. Um, and ultimately, uh, we saw the application of advanced technologies from artificial intelligence and blockchain to big data and analytics um, and biometrics, using those and combining many of those to create very interesting and compelling solutions. And I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, in Ukraine, Prozoro created an electronic auction system that sells state property. The system was handled transactions over $100 million, boosting transparency and accountability, and also helping the country with much needed revenue raising. In Argentina, Teneris is helping to ensure integrity in the public uh, tenders and contracts process. It's a blockchain-based system used by private companies and public institutions, and it's being leveraged right now by one of Argentina's largest banks, as well as a, a large commodities exchange. And then in Lebanon, AidTech is a blockchain-based system that is delivering aid swiftly and securely to Syrian refugees. Um, and through their platform, which is an electronic cards-based system, instead of a manual sort of paper voucher, we're ensuring that the aid is actually getting to the recipient who needs it the most. So what's remarkable about Tech for Integrity is the ecosystem of stakeholders that were created and how they were able to connect in ways that they never had before, from governments to large companies, startups, financial institutions, nonprofits and, and, and multilaterals, uh, we broke down the barriers between those communities and we created a channel for innovation to flourish. Uh, and we proved that the model is replicable and it's highly effective and it can be used for other, other types of, of challenges. <coughs> and this is what's really lasting about it and that's why we're so proud of where we are today and, and the fact that we're sitting on the stage and Pachi is taking the initiative forward. Um, because when you think about the very nature of corruption, it spans sectors, it spans industries, it crosses borders, and a robust coordination among these actors is necessary um, in order to really be effective. Um, because individually, we only see one very narrow slice of the pie, um, or one link in the chain, and together we have greater access and data can mm -hmm. help, us, help us get there. Um, so in terms of what's next, as was mentioned by by my panelists here. Um, Pachi is going to take forward the, the platform to keep it alive, um, to keep it updated, to bring new companies and partners to the table so that we can share solutions um, and, and really figure out how to implement the ones that are, are being um, affected or piloted in different respects. Pachi's a perfect partner to take this forward. Um, Obviously, as was mentioned, a pioneer since 2004 in anti-corruption efforts, really driving policy changes, shaping outcomes at, at global and local levels. Um, and the fact that it's a permanent initiative of the WEF 
um, having both resources and funding to scale the initiative is going to be important. And they also have the convening power and the membership that's necessary for this ecosystem to thrive. Um, and many of, of the allies in Tech for Integrity are members of Pachi, and I think it's a great synergy as we move forward. Um, I'd say that the role of the private sector is as important now as, as ever. Uh, many of the solutions that came out of, of the challenge um, are powerful ideas that can really re-engineer how business is conducted and how governments operate, but they have to be tested, they have to be adapted, they have to be integrated, um, and that will require the help and support of the private sector. And, and many of the solutions will also have to be onboarded by governments to fully be integrated. Um, and governments alone can't design these systems. And the private sector and the allies here on the stage are willing to put forward their support to build this capacity. Um, at City specifically, our innovation lab in Dublin is looking at over 30 of the, of the 96 solutions that are related to the financial industry, from identity to help with um, anti-money laundering capabilities and payment streams. Um, and we are looking at how we can integrate those into our core platforms and then ultimately offer them to our clients. Um, and the work is exciting and it's promising and when we see the progress. Thank you very much, Jennifer. I think we have a, a little bit of time um, for, for questions, if there are any questions from the floor. Can you please introduce yourself? For you? Hi, uh, I'm Guilherme from IT Media here in Brazil. Uh, my question is for Mr. Schwab. Uh, could you please explain a little bit more about the platform? Like, who can use it? Is uh, any type of companies is it open for government? Or actually, is it a, an open platform? Uh, could you please give me more details on this? Sure. So I think, um, actually, Jennifer knows more about the, the technology than I do. But there, there's an open part to it where, um, uh, you know, uh, governments, businesses can go and select, uh, and I think we can share the link. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, the link is out, actually. And they can select uh, one of the pain points that, that Jennifer alluded to um, and, uh, you know, be, and uh, select the region where they want to operate, be it uh, uh, Latin America, Asia, uh, other regions, and then uh, the platform will connect them uh, or will provide them with uh, a number of suppliers of technology uh, that address that specific, uh, that specific pain point, right? So that's one part of the platform. Then there's a part which is more close to uh, our partners and members where, you know, we have, we, we, we basically use it as the ongoing discussions which we also have in the, in the physical space uh, around the sharing of best practices, around, um, you know, dialogue. Uh, basically, the the, the uh, you know the outcomes of of of, um, of the discussions around the around the project. So that's sort of two components of uh, of the platform. And uh, for your information, we have sent out right now a, a press release uh, where all this is explained, and the the link to the platform is there. It's, a, it's the pl platform is public, so you can find all the information um, there, and you can test it out and 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 look how it functions. Um, I think uh, we have, we went around the, the topic uh, for tonight. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all, all the, the panelists um, for sharing, sharing their experience and, and their opinions and, and views on, on this important topic for the region. Um, thank you for, for our audience and you can um, share and see and watch again um, this on, on our webcast. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.